Hey everyone, it's Marty from Down the Rabbit Hole Travel. Today I'm going to make a video that shows you how to turn this into this, which can then be used to create your own at-home, do-it-yourself escape room games. Stay tuned. I've had lots of my viewers follow along with my escape room videos and create their own at-home escape room games, which is awesome. That's why I make these videos. Lots of people ask me, what do I use for lock boxes? You can go to Amazon and buy pre-made lock boxes with hasps and special locks already attached. Lots of these boxes look really pretty. They can look like antique treasure chests or they'll have decoupage on top. And that's fine. If you have the money to buy those pre-made lock boxes from Amazon, super great. I'll even put some links in the description box below that shows you the kind of possibilities that you could buy online. Also, feel free to buy off of those particular links. They're affiliate links and they'll help my channel, so that would be amazing. But if you are like me and you're cheap or you don't want to spend a ton of money on just one game that you might play, you can go to the dollar store and buy wooden boxes like this or smaller, I have many smaller boxes, for $1.25 all the way up to $4, which is what this larger size box cost me. I really like the look of this old iron box, which retails for $5,000, which is not something I can afford. So I'm gonna try and recreate it here in this video. So if you wanna try this too, all you need is a $4 wooden box from the dollar store, a jar of black acrylic paint and a paintbrush of some sort, a little bit of silver metallic looking paint from the dollar store. You're gonna want some Mod Podge, a box of one and one eighth screw eyes, which are like little hooks with holes in the center of them. These will become your lock hasps. So I'm gonna start by putting a base coat of black onto the box. To make the iron style bars across the top of my box, I got this crafter's foam. It's actually, this is actually letters punched out, but I'm just going to ignore the letters and just cut this foam into narrow strips and that will become the iron bars that go across the top of the treasure box. My foam strips are the self-adhesive kind where you can peel the back off and then just stick it on the box. But sadly, because the only craft foam I could find was one with already punched out alphabet letters in it, I can't peel off the backing because then it all just comes apart in weird letter shapes. So I'm gonna get a hot glue gun and I'm gonna glue my strips to the wooden box instead. Now I need to glue gun down the edges of the foam. Just there's little parts where it's sticking up um, and you wanna have glue fully surrounding all the edges because next we're gonna Mod Podge the top and we don't want the Mod Podge to seep underneath or things will start to lift. So we're gonna hot glue everything down super, super good. So now it's time to cover all of the foam shapes with this Mod Podge, and I'm just gonna use a paintbrush to do that. Next up, we crumple a piece of tissue paper. It doesn't really matter what color because you're gonna eventually paint over it, but I chose black because I'm gonna paint over it with black. We're gonna crumple it up and we're going to lay it flat over top of our case. It doesn't matter if your tissue paper tears in some spots, um, just as long as you can get it to stick down all the way and cover up the top. I'm gonna layer mine up just one more time because I have lots of extra tissue paper, so I'm just going to add more Mod Podge, and then I'm gonna 
fold the tissue paper over on top. One last layer of Mod Podge and then we're gonna define our areas. Next up, take a toothpick and just use the edge to poke our paper along the sides of our iron bars just so that they look a little more defined. If your paper rips, that's okay. You just want them to have more of a ridged look. All right, now I'm gonna let this dry so that the white of the Mod Podge disappears. Then I'm gonna trim the extra edges of the tissue paper and we'll go on to the next step. All right, it's really starting to come together, starting to look like that old iron wrought top. I'm gonna put another layer of black paint on it to cover up all these yellow bits that have peeked through, and then we'll distress it to make it look a little more metallic. Okay, that top layer of black paint is dry. Now this is the part where it's either gonna look super cool or I'm gonna completely mess it up. So I'm going to take some silver metallic paint and I'm gonna put just a blob of it on this sponge. I ran out of foam brushes, but a sponge will do just fine. And I'm just gonna swipe it across the elevated parts of the box where those iron grids are to hopefully make it look like real old aged metal. We'll see. Well, everyone, I am happy to say that this box turned out super cool. I messed up a little bit on the front here. I got a little swipe happy with that sponge, but I don't really care. It still looks pretty cool. And I'm so happy with the way the top turned out. I mean, obviously it doesn't look like an antique $2,300 trunk, but for a dollar store wooden chest that I can now use as a prop, I think it turned out really well. Now that the paint is fully dry, I'm going to give it a quick clear coat of this Trim Clad Clear Spray. You could also paint it with some of that polyurethane coating as well. We do have one last step to make this into a true blue escape room prop, and that is to add our screw eyes so that we can actually put a lock on this box and use it in a game. So just a reminder, you want the one and one eighth size they're big enough to fit those bigger locks like a combination lock or a word lock. Anything smaller and you won't be able to use those specialty locks. So try and get um, screw eyes of this size. So we're going to put our screw eyes quite close to the lock mechanism. We're gonna put one on the top lid and directly below it on the bottom lid. And don't space them out too far apart or then your smaller little TSA suitcase locks won't fit on it. So you have to be kind of strategic. There's the one on the top. It's quite close to the bottom of the lid. Try not to get it too close or it could crack the wood, but close enough that your lock's gonna be able to fit. And now we're gonna put a second one just below. And there we go. We have some holes for our lock to slide through and we'll be able to lock up our antique old wrought iron or whatever kind of iron treasure box we've just created. DIY escape room lock box complete. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful, please let me know by leaving a thumbs up or saying so in the comments below. I know I had fun making it. To all my regular viewers, thanks for coming back to watch and hopefully I'll be able to get some actual travel videos out soon. To any new viewers, thanks for checking out my content. 
I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and becoming part of my YouTube community.